Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the president of the Dean's Board of Student Advisors, Abdi Mosinin. Born in St. Petersburg, Russia, Alexandra Ifomova attended the renowned Arts School of Heritage State Art Museum, trained in classical dance and visual art, and enjoyed rigorous academic studies from an early age. After moving to the United States, in the 1993, she pursued a bachelor degree in international business and marketing from Eastern Michigan University, while becoming a competitive ballroom dancer and exploring interests in business and fashion. Before graduating from the EMU, Alexandra had already founded Russian Point to import and market point shoes from Moscow, handcrafted in the grand tradition of Russian dance shoemaking. Her commitment to excellence in every aspect of the business, from production to marketing to customer education, helped Russian Point grow rapidly throughout North America. Today, the brand is internationally recognized for providing the highest quality in products and services. And Russian Point's products are available throughout the world. Alexandra is a Harvard Business School alumni, graduated of prestigious owned President's Management Program. She's a chair of the Senator Mark Kirk Eastern European Advisory Board. She's a chair of the Congressman Bob Dahl, Russian Small Businesses Leadership Group, and she chairs Moscow Committee of Chicago Mayor's Office. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Alexandra Ifomova. Thank you very much for such a warm welcome. So in the next 18 minutes, I'm gonna to try to compress 18 years of my life on, as a business owner and give you um, maybe three things that I would love you to take away from today's event. First is based on my example, it doesn't matter where you are today. What really will make a difference is where you want to go and what you're willing to do today and tomorrow to achieve your goals. Second, I hope that my, sp my story will inspire you to find your muse something that will make you want to wake up in the morning and choose um, and pursue the career and the field that you chose. And third is give you some specific examples how to align your actions to your strategy and to your organization vision and mission. I founded Russian Point in 1998 as a student at Eastern Michigan University. Our mission is to provide elegant dancing supplies and to inspire dancers to lead extraordinary life. I started the company only with one product line, Point Shoes. And now, 18 years later, we have over 50,000 SKUs that we offer to dancers. We have two distribution centers, one in Chicago and one in the Netherlands. We supply over 400 wholesale accounts. We supply products to top professional dance companies worldwide like Boston Ballet, Royal Winnipeg Ballet, Colorado Ballet, and many others. So here's some of the examples of our products. I'm building the biggest and the best dance shoe brand in the world. And as you can see, we supply products to dancers, ballet, ballroom, jazz, modern, and every, every category. So this is a short video that Bank of America did and used us for a commercial. Since we have very little time, I welcome you to go to our website, RussianPoint.com, and see this. So I'm very frequently asked, what inspired you, and when did you decide that you would like to have your own business? I grew up in Soviet Union, and we didn't even have the concept of business ownership. So when I came to the United States, I, it was very, very new for me to even grasp what is it like to own a business. And when I was a student at Eastern Michigan University, one of our wonderful professors, Lorraine Hendrickson, founded a student club, and she called it Future Business Owners Club. 
And about the same year, um, Chicago University hosted a conference. So we all piled on the vans and buses and we drove to Chicago. And for the opening session, um, it was on Michigan Avenue at the Intercontinental Hotel. It was a beautiful room, very similar to today's. It was about 600 students. And um, all the students were fired up. Everybody wanted to be the next Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, or Richard Branson. And for many of us, it was the very first time we even put a business suit on. So you could sense that everybody was kind of measuring each other out and said, who is going to be bigger and who is going to be stronger? And everybody was fired up to be the best. And there was a podium very similar to this, where the keynote speakers stood. And on top of it, there was a big banner that said, welcome to the third annual Student Entrepreneurship Conference. So at that time, I spoke English for less than four years of my life. So a lot of uh, words were still a big puzzle for me. So I knew what the word conference means, I knew what the word welcome means, but I had no idea what this long word entrepreneurship meant. So I leaned to the student who sat next to me, and I said, what does the word entrepreneurship mean? He looked at me like I was not from a different planet, like I was from a different galaxy. He said, that's when you own a business. That's what this whole conference is about. So I said, it sounds like a really important word I should know if I want to have my own business. So I spent the, the rest of the lunch learning how to spell the word. <laughs> and when the lunch was over and all the speakers left, as students uh, got up and started going into breakout sessions, he stopped and he said, do you see all the students here really fired up and everybody thinks they'll be a billionaire? Here's the facts. Out of hundreds of students here, there'll be less than half who will actually sit down and write a business plan. Out of the half that will actually write the plan, there'll probably be less than half who will actually start, uh, register the company and start the business. According to the United States statistics of starting the business, less than half will see five-year anniversary, and less than seven of those businesses that get started will see a 10-year anniversary and less than two will actually see a 15-year anniversary. He said, have a great time at the conference, and I'll see you later. <laughs> so and as everybody was leaving the room, I stood there and I thought, I want to, so I realized there will be less than a handful of businesses that will actually be successful out of everybody who wants to have one. And I said, I want to be one of them. And this year, we're celebrating our 18th year in business. So the first lesson I learned, it's not really a decision, what kind of business. It was really the, my mindset is that the failure is not an option, and I'm not going to quit, whatever it takes. So starting my business, I started with a $1,200 check that State of Illinois sent me as a financial aid um, help to buy textbooks and pay for my tuition at Eastern that year. And to be honest, I did not buy no textbooks and, um, and not much more. I bought a fax machine, I printed business cards, and then I drove to Lansing uh, because I learned that if I fill out my own application, it will cost only $95 to start a corporation instead of paying $1,000 to an attorney. So, um, uh, I was introduced by accident to Owner to cobblers in Moscow who made shoes for the Bolshoi Ballet and for the Kirov. And as a dancer myself in the past, I thought, well, I can sell the shoes to local dancers and put myself through school. And that for sure will beat um, being a waitress and clean dirty dishes. So it was really starting the business as my avoidance of um, doing jobs I didn't want to do. Um, so my marketing strategy was sounded like this. I opened the yellow pages, and I looked at the pages that said dancing supplies. And I would pick up the phone and call. And my marketing speech sounded like this. With a very thick Russian accent, I would say, my name is Alexandra. I have Russian shoes. Russian ballet is good, and you must buy my shoes. <laughs> so if they didn't hang up the phone on me, that was already a successful phone call. 
And one by one, people were kind enough to try the products I was offering. One school by one school invited me to feed their dancers into their Russian point shoes. One store by one store, they were willing to take some of my products and try to sell it. And today we have over 400 stores nationwide and internationally that sell Russian point brand, as well as numerous dance companies prefer our products. So before I ended up in the pages of Forbes magazines, um, TV interviews, and standing in front of you, the life um, and the road to success was not as easy. Um, there was numerous occasions where my phones were shut off. There were numerous times where my electricity was shut off. My goal to was to have lunch and dinner under $5 at Meyer's Grocery Store Buffet, the salad bar, on the corner of Carpenter and Ellsworth. And I learned how, what kind of vegetables and whatever else they were serving weighs less or more. So on a lucky day, I could even get it under $4. And when the FedEx would stop to come and pick up boxes, I learned that if I piled the boxes in, because I didn't pay the bill to FedEx, I learned if I'll pile the boxes in my trunk and I'll drive to the terminal of FedEx and give it to the boys who actually uh, put them on the conveyor, they'll not check against my account if it was suspended or not. And the boxes will go out to customers. So it was, never glam it was not always glamorous. It was a lot of challenges I went through. But the lessons I learned is that creatively, I can think outside of the box and drive the results I need to drive. Um, and another thing I want to point out, of turning advantages into disadvantages. I'm very frequently asked, do you ever feel disadvantages as a woman business owner? Or do you feel disadvantages as an immigrant? And I, I, never, I never even thought of it, whether I'm a disadvantage because I'm a woman or because I'm an immigrant. I turned it into my advantage. Being from Russia, I used that as the selling point because Russian ballet is very famous. Being a woman, I think I was able to open certain doors. So for all the young students, for dancers, for immigrants, or whoever it is, do not ever think that being an immigrant or woman, it could be possibly any kind of disadvantage. So as one of my most favorite sayings says, the ship in harbor is safe, but it's not what the ships are built for. So if you have a passion inside you, you have to get out and do it. Next slide. So here's my favorite Japanese proverb. It says, vision without action is a daydream. And actions without vision is a nightmare. So before I even started the business, I came up with this game, and I don't know why. I would imagine what would ideal life look like and what would my ideal career look like. And I would take some quiet time and write everything what I want my life to be. And I would write out what would my job be like if I didn't have to make money? What would I want to do with myself? And going to a spa and going shopping and having lunches with girlfriends would get old very quickly. So I wrote things that I really loved. I love to travel, I love fashion, I love children, I love education, I love international part. I like actually making things and giving it to people. I like creating events. So I started thinking of what kind of things really internally would make me happy. If I don't need money, if I don't need to impress anybody, what would I want to do with my life every single day? And slowly by slowly, that I would fine tune that, uh, that list. And I put things that were very materialistic, to be honest. I did not put in that I want to save children in Africa and give them pure water, because it honestly just didn't touch me. Um, but I was, and I am very passionate about promoting the best and the arts for children. Um, I put things like driving Mercedes and living in a tall building and traveling the world. And time by time, so after I, had the business already, and I was my, uh, in my junior and my senior years. When I graduated and finished studies at Eastern Michigan University, 
I compared what Russian point actually was. And I realized that there was a lot of things what my company was exactly matched with what, what my ideal career would be. I worked with children. I worked in the field of arts. I traveled around the world either to see uh, my manufacturers or to see my clients. I bridged the, um, the, the international cultures around the world. I manufactured products and I gave it to people. We hosted numerous events, whether it was competitions or seminars. So I realized that what I have now as a business was very, very close to what I ideally wanted to have. So I started business out of necessity to make some money and put myself through school. But I chose to keep it because it was exactly what I wanted it to be. So another lesson I learned is very, very important to know what exactly you want in life. Because then we can make conscious choices to get us closer to where we want. And it also, at the same time, makes us accountable for our own happiness. And we can't blame anybody that situation that we're in is because we ended up there somehow. So I started this presentation by saying our mission statement. is that Our mission is to provide elegant dance products and to inspire the dancers to lead extraordinary lives. And for us at Russian Point, our mission is not something that executives decide. We wrote it, wrote it in a handbook for employees and we stuck it in a shelf. It is something that we live and we breathe and we work with every day. And we develop our strategy based on our vision, asking ourselves the question every single day, what do we need to do to win? What do we need to do to live and breathe our mission statement? And based on that, we go through a strategy with my team, thinking of the best, most effective and efficient ways to get us there. And then we break it down to goals, Goals are measurable, goals are, have a deadline, and what we call it Russian DRI, directly responsible individu individual, which creates a great transparency in the organization. So we don't argue what project we should in, uh, involve ourselves or what will be an ad look like. We always start at the top, we start at the vision, we scale it down to mission, our key objectives, our goals, and our deadlines. And in conclusion, okay, this is a very, very good slide. I'll just take one more minute. So as you see this beautiful ballerina, she's perfectly aligned. And there'll be one part of the body that's not in perfect balance. She would not be able to stay in this beautiful pose. So when I think about the strategy, it's really important that we align our strategy and our execution to the corporate vision. And that's, what, that's the only really way that we're able to drive great results in the company. In conclusion, I would like to give you a few things that I think are very important. It doesn't matter where you are today, what really will make a difference in your life is where you, would, you, where you envision yourself in the future and what you're willing to do today to get yourself there. Finding your muse, think about quietly with yourself. What would really you like to do and what makes you happy without money, without anybody giving you a credit? And see, and I'm confident there is a way to make a great career out of it. Execution is much more important than a great strategy or even a great idea. Continue to learn and grow. And build a strong team and the company culture of accountability, personal commitment to the end result. Thank you very much for being here. I'm honored and humbled to be here. Congratulations to all the awardees. Thank you for sponsors. And um, thank you, Dean Tedwell, for inviting me.